Hey guys, welcome back to Enduro Evolution. And in this video, we're going to tear apart this PDS shock and install some gold valves in a bladder kit. I can't stop steering. You've put a spell on me. And I hope that you never decide to set me free. The way you you can count the clicks and turns so you can set it back to the way you had it. After installing the gold valves, I'll set everything back to standard, then go ride and adjust from there. After you have your adjustments recorded, open up all the clickers counterclockwise. You want your clickers to be open when reinstalling everything to allow oil to pass through the valve body easier. Let's not waste time or take this long. The marker is to set base points so you can count how many times you've turned it. This one I'm turning now is your high speed compression adjuster and the one in the middle is your low speed compression adjuster. Measure the distance between the groove on the shock and the preload collar locking ring. This will get you close to the original seg when reinstalling the spring. Take a 4mm hex wrench and loosen your preload collar locking ring. You can use a spanner wrench, but you should be able to turn the spring by hand. Once you have the spring loose, you can lower the locking ring and remove the snap ring. Make sure to use some type of soft jaw. So grab a punch and lightly tap up and remove this cap. It's not waste time. We'll take this slow. We've got miles behind us, but miles to go. So let's just break this down to the simplest truth. You and I as one will always Be careful when removing this little bolt. There's about 145 PSI behind it. You and I as one will always be Push the seal head down and remove the circlip. With your 24 millimeter wrench, remove your base valve. This is your outer base valve cage, so clean it up and set it aside. Remove the valve body. The best way to remove this cap is with an oxyacetylene torch using a brazing tip. You want to get it hot fairly quick so you don't wreck o-rings. Replace this o-ring if you need to. Clean any Loctite that might be remaining in the threads. With the Loctite included in the kit, 
tear it open and coat the threads. Screw on the cap and torque it to 25 foot-pounds with the SDI cap tool. Let the Loctite dry and remove the cap. With your 17 mm wrench, remove the shock shaft nut. You don't need to file off those peenings, that nut comes off as one piece. Pay attention to all your stack heights. So you'll have to reuse the base plate and probably some other shims to get the correct stack height. Throw your shims on a piece of mechanics wire and close the ends. It keeps it organized and makes it easier to measure. This is pretty important so take your time and measure twice. Make sure to label your shim stacks. Once you get your shim stack sorted out, we'll move to the next step. The first step is to drill a bleed hole. <clears throat> I have a 1 16th drill bit. 
see this hole right here. Comes pre-drilled a little bit. Need to finish the job. I got a 1 16th drill bit. So gently clamp your gold valve into soft jaws, just enough to prevent it from turning. A slight modification to the drill bit will be needed to give it zero rake. I'll show you how to do that in a different video. I'll link it in the description. Make sure to keep your drill bit straight up and down, or square to the piece. So you'll want to take some emery cloth and kind of clean the burr up. Clean your shaft up and get ready to install everything. So take an air wand and blow out all those little holes. You don't want any parts cleaner in your suspension fluid. Clean the shim stacks and gold valve out with some fast evaporating parts cleaner and then blow them out with an air gun. Lube up the shaft and install the seal head. It's a good idea to have the proper seal bullet, unlike myself. Reuse the old base plate and install the spacing shims. The spacing shims have to be larger than the smallest shim on the compression stack. Install your compression stack followed by the gold valve and then the rebound stack. The compression side has six ports and the rebound has three. So those six ports are facing down. Install the rebound base plate. Add spacing shims to the top of the compression base plate until the step is near the middle of the rebound base plate. Look for step in this diagram. Put some Loctite on the threads and install the shaft nut. Torque the shaft nut to 25 foot-pounds. Remove any excess Loctite, you don't want that stuff getting into your system. Take your time here and make sure everything is lined up. You want that to float. And then torque the top shaft nut to 25 foot pounds. In case you filed the peening, I'll show you how to reassemble this and repeen it. Grab a chisel and lightly tap until you form a groove. Turn the chisel 90 degrees and peen it again.
clean the valve body and insert it into the cage. Watch out for flying O-rings. With your 24mm wrench, install the base valve until it's snug then torque it to 13 foot-pounds. Make sure to grease up the outer surface on the cap. Add grease to the o-ring for a better seal. Lube everything up before you install it. Push the seal head down past the snap ring groove and install your snap ring. Make sure it's seated. A shock pump is recommended for bleeding. Stick the hose inside the oil jug and turn the vacuum pump on. It will suck suspension oil into the reservoir and once you get about a liter in there, shut off your valve and pull the hose out and let the vacuum suck the remaining fluid out of the line. Cap off the end and turn the valve to vacuum. And then turn the vacuum pump on and degas the fluid. Install a quarter inch BPST fitting into the shock bleed hole. Turn on the vacuum pump and suck all the air out of the shock. This will take a few minutes so just keep an eye on everything and listen for leaks around the fittings. If you have a leak, turn everything off and neutralize the air pressure and fix the leaks. Sometimes those hoses aren't pressed in enough. After you have sucked all the air out, flip the valve to compressed air and pressure the system to 45 psi. It's important to set your pressure regulator from the compressor to 45 psi max. There is a 50 psi blow off valve but that's just for emergencies. Once you have pressured up the system, bleed the air off and turn the vacuum pump back on and do one more cycle to make sure you got all the air out. After your second time pressuring up the system, neutralize the air, disconnect everything and install the bleeder bolt.
install the bleeder bolt, check the o-ring and make sure it's in good condition. Pro tip number one, put on that collar before you put everything together. So here I'm just cleaning up the spring washers. Make sure to wear eye protection. Try not to hold your pieces like a little girl. Always double check to make sure your snap rings are seated. Turn in all your adjusters. I'm going to start off at 15 clicks and tune from there when I get out to ride. Thanks for watching guys and subscribe to the channel if you want to continue seeing more videos like this.